Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Well, it's still Bible Tract Echoes, but we give the very same title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Well, you know why it's called Tuesday in the title, because it's Tuesday. But the other two words, Tract and Truth, are used for very distinct reasons. Number one, the word Tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and it's a word in reference to an evangelism tool called a gospel tract. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation based upon the word of God. The word truth has reference to the fact that when it comes to the spiritual issues of the day, there is truth. There is absolute truth given by the God of creation. Tract and Truth Tuesday. We're going to use our day like we typically do on Tuesday to emphasize using tracts and emphasizing the truth and how to communicate the truth of the gospel. And so if you can right now, get your Bible open. I'm going to read, or actually I'm going to quote Psalm 19 verse 1. You may have memorized that verse even though you never tried Psalm 19 1. If you've never uh, memorized Psalm 19 1, I would encourage you to do so, but that's where my my Bible is open to right now. Here's my question for you today. How do you go about witnessing to a person that does not believe in God? They call themselves an atheist. Now, whether they are truly an atheist or an agnostic or they just don't believe you can know for sure, somebody who says, I really don't know if there's a God at all or I, I flat out don't believe in God. How do we communicate the gospel to somebody like that? That's our goal today, along with a couple of other ideas as well. Now, I have a gospel tract in my hand. This one's entitled, You Can Know, with an exclamation point there. You Can Know. The subtitle is, Real Answers to Eternal Issues. We believe the Bible is the word of the living God. You can trust it. Jesus said that not one jot or one tittle of the law of the God's word would ever pass away till all of it is fulfilled. Our Bible is given to us by God. It's true because it's based upon the character of God. We can find eternal answers, answers that we can know and be eternally sure about when we use the word of God. In this gospel tract, you can know, we ask questions like, is there a hereafter? And we give a Bible answer. Is there a heaven? We give a Bible answer. Is there a hell? We give a Bible answer. Where do the saved go when they die? We give a Bible answer. And there's a couple other questions. But then we get to this one. Where will I go when I die? Well, now we're getting to the crux of the matter. Oh, dear friend, do you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity if you were to die today? Are you 100% sure you go to heaven or do you doubt that? Here's a great gospel tool. You can know it's going to answer your question from the Bible, not from some radio speaker, not from somebody who's been necessarily to Bible school or not. It's going to answer from the eternal, unchangeable word of God. You can know. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three methods. He's going to give you our telephone number. He's going to give our mailing address. He's going to give our, our website address. He's going to give those for this reason. If you will take one of those methods and use it to give to us your name and your mailing address, we will, with absolute freeness, we will give you a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts, these evangelism tools, one each 
of all of our English tracks. There's about 41, 42 different tracks there. This one, you can know, will be in there. Friend, please let me do that. Have pen and paper ready when my announcer comes back on. Just in case you cannot hang around that long, our web address is simply this, BibleTracksInc.org. Org. You know how to spell Bible. The word tracks, again, is T-R-A-C-T-S. The word ink is I-N-C, then dot org. BibleTracksInc.org. Please let us send you that today. Give us your name and your mailing address. Here's the Bible verse for us today. Psalm 19, verse 1, it says this, The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament, which we reference to the skies and the universe out there in space, the firmament showeth his, God's, handiwork. Stop right there. I'm going to say it again. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. I recently read a story of a, a witnessing experience. It's not mine, but somebody else's. And at first glance, it appeared that uh, the witnessing person had failed. In the end, he was a great success. You see, a Christian man had been trying to witness to a hard-hearted friend of his. And many attempts had been made, but the unsaved, hard-hearted man just seemed to be untouched. Well, it was coming to Easter time. And the Christian man decided to make one more attempt. He went to the lost man's home and invited him to a special Good Friday service at his church. And they had planned and encouraged the people to invite lost people to the service. It was going to be a gospel preaching service. Well, he went to his uh, friend's home and to try him to get him to come to this Good Friday service. Uh, he had... Uh, made an impassioned plea, but the hard-hearted friend rejected him. But unbeknownst to the Christian man, there was another man at his friend's house. This other man was laying some ceramic tile on the floor in the kitchen, but he was out of sight as the Christian man, with great passion, great desire, almost tears in his eyes, had pleaded with his hard-hearted friend to come to the Good Friday service. Well, the hard-hearted man said no, and the Christian man left. The Christian man did not know is that the man laying tile got up when the Christian man left, went out to his car, and called his wife and told her how the Christian man had lovingly pleaded with his friend to come to the service. So gripped was the tile guy by the concern shown by the believer that he and his wife went to the Good Friday service, and guess what? They were both gloriously saved. Oh, friend, never doubt that God is at work even when there seems to be no immediate results. You want an up-to-date story? This comes from yesterday. Yesterday, I was on the phone with our key worker in the country of India, and I was asking him about the update on the a million tracks that we had printed there at the very, very end of 2017. And they're being distributed, and India is a very difficult, hard place right now. Christians are basically putting their lives on the line to share the gospel in that country. Well, he told me how some workers had gone, gone to a shop, and there was a man, and they handed him a gospel track, and the look in this man's face just startled the Christian workers. They began to have a conversation. The man there with a startled face had planned to commit suicide that day. They urged him to please read the track before he did anything else. The man did read the track. They came back later on. That was their plan. When they came back, the change in this man's face was utterly unbelievable. He had received Christ as Savior through one of our tracks. He was not going to commit suicide now. He had a brand new life as a gift from Almighty God. Oh, friend, gospel tracks work. I love stories like that. Well, I read here a moment ago out of the book of uh, Psalm, Psalm 19.1. My question for today is how do you and I share and witness to people who say they don't believe in God? Now, here are some quick steps. I hope I have time to get done with all of them. Number one, I always ask permission if I could explain to them why I do believe that God exists. And I also say to them, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to quote a verse, and I quote Psalm 19, verse 1. And I say that I believe that God exists because, well, in a nutshell, this verse explains why. 
Number two, I say to the person that I believe God exists because the way creation looks, because of the way creation looks. I tell them that in the verse I just quoted here, the word declares is used. The word means that God is showing forth something. It's actually translated by the words show forth in Psalm 9 and some other places. I tell the person that I see in creation that God is showing forth that he does exist. Third thing I do is I try to use a very simple picture. I say to the person, typically this is the illustration I use, I say to them, if I were to go down the street and find a child's chalk drawing on the sidewalk, even though there was no child around, I say to the person who is a practicing atheist, I said, if you and I were to see this and I were to turn to you and say, what do you already know when you look at this picture? Well, even though there's no child around, we would know that there had been a child there because the drawing is there. The results of what the child had done are quite evident. It's there on the sidewalk. I move from that step to the fourth step in what I do. I then talk about the beauty of the world. Now, the chalk drawing may not be all that beautiful, but look at the world. Since the world is so beautiful, it could not be made by somebody who lacked beauty. And I begin to talk about the beauty of God. I say the God of the Bible is not a God of uh, physical so much, but he's a spirit. And so we're dealing with the character and the beauty of his character. I talk about God's love. I talk about God's grace. That's the beauty of the God who made this beautiful world. But either the person immediately begins to ask me or I bring it up himself, myself, this next step. If I'm allowed, I ask them to the person, have you ever seen any ugly parts of our world? Like famine areas and, and uh, people dying of starvation and so on. And the lost person will all often ask why God made the world to be like that. Well, that's my opening to talk about you know what talk about sin. God didn't make the world to be a place of famine and storms and death. That came because we, man, disobeyed God, just flat out chose to not follow God's ways. And so sin came into the world and death by sin and famine and so on. My final step in talking to a practicing atheist is to tell the lost person that the present condition of our world is not going to be the final one. God says this, he will make all things new. God has a plan to make this world new again. He will let the wreckage be made new again. Death is going to be pushed aside. God will make all things new. I then explain how people can become part of this newness that God's going to bring And I just simply walk through the plan of salvation of Jesus' love gift of dying on the cross. God himself, creator God, came, displayed the character of his grace, displayed the character of his love to people, outcast people, as well as religious people, and offers them eternal life. Oh, friend, gospel tracts are a great way to offer eternal life. Please, Please let me send you that sample packet. My announcer is going to come back on just a moment here. Please have pen and paper ready. Let's you and I become partners in the gospel. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.